Okay, this is an area here where I have this bridge that's in here. I've got this, had this rigged up temporarily just so I could at least run the trains. But I wanted this section from here over to here to be completely removable so that I can have access to get up through here to get to the switches in the back here uh, and so on. So right now I've got it all set up. I've got it so that it is removable and I'll show you the latches here in a minute. But this just pops up and the whole thing completely lifts right out which now leaves this completely wide open now for me to be able to get up in here without crawling over the bridge to get access to the switches. And it's very easy to go right back in. I've got these threaded studs on the bottom here so that I have wing nuts that I can put into the bottom if I need to, but at least this helps uh, guide the, the bridge down into place. And then it just snaps down into place at each end and I'm all set and ready to go. Okay, here's one of the ball latches that I have on my bridge abutment that you can see here. I try to keep this in focus. It's not easy for me to do here. And all I did was I just mortised it down in there and then I've got a wire that runs from the one screw over here underneath the plywood and comes up and connects to my outer rail over here. So this this latch is actually doing uh, three things all in one. One, it's latching the bridge down into place. It's also providing me with lateral uh, location so that it can't move laterally side to side. And it's also providing my electrical power from this latch to the outer rail and from the mating part of this latch up to the ground rail on the bridge itself. Now here at this end I've got the same exact kind of a ball latch. It's a double ball latch and the pins that are on the the bridge fit down in between the two balls which again gives me the uh, the lateral location of the bridge along with locking it down into place and also providing on this side instead of for the ground rail this is now going to the center rail of the track and providing my power there. Okay, here's one of the mating pins that fits down between the two ball latches on, that you had just seen previously that are mounted, uh, mortised into the bridge abutments. As you can see here, I've got a wire that's attached to one of the screws and that's in this particular case, that wire goes to the center rail of the track on the bridge. Okay, here we have the other mating latch at the other end of the bridge and again I've got a wire attached to it that comes down and is soldered to the outer rail of the track. Now because I'm using Ross uh, brand track and they have wooden ties I do have a jumper wire that does connect the two outer rails together so that I have ground on both outer rails. Now part of the purpose of mortising in those latches in there is so that should you get down here and you look at the underside of the bridge again I'm having difficulty trying to keep this in focus here for you uh, you can see that everything is completely hidden from this side of the bridge and all the mess and all the wiring is all done on the back side. It's the same thing at the other end of the bridge that again when looking at it from the bottom side all you see is my bridge abutment and no wires. Okay so now that I've got the bridge back into place now it's just a matter of getting the details done because I've got all the wiring done, the track is obviously has been mounted and so on. Uh, so let's just get to the detailing on it and the painting uh, and so forth. The look that I'm trying to go for is something very similar to this bridge right here. It is to, it's to have a girder bridge uh, type look to it, uh, although it will be on a curve and so forth. But this is the look that I'm trying to go for and I'll just have to wait and see how it comes out.